when we take the limit as x approaches c of f of x, if we get a number, we say the limit exists, right? But sometimes we write infinity, right? We do this, we put infinity here. So this means the limit does not exist. Uh, but what does it mean even more? It means, means that, well, basically it means that the y value gets really big when x gets really close to c. That's what it means, right? Um, you could say it a more precise way, but again, the y value gets big when x is close to c. I'll say it a more precise way. It means that f of x grows, and the term we tend to use is arbitrarily large. That means it gets big, how big? As big as you want. So it grows arbitrarily large. Or you can say grows without bound. You can also say without bound, without bound. Or you can also say it just gets big. So <laughs> grows arbitrarily large, grows without bound, it gets big. In my mind, I think big, big. Big is an easier word to say in your mind. Big, it's one syllable. It means that f of x gets big when x gets close to c, gets close to c. So whenever we get infinity, it's kind of tricky because you can't really show the work. So on your exam, when you have these questions, I'll say don't show work. So you'll know. So you know, you know if it says do not, no work is necessary, you know it's these. You'll know, hey, we're people. Oh, it's filling in. Ah, oh, it's so good. Oh, hello. Okay, and then the other one is limit x approaches c f of x equals negative infinity equals negative infinity. This means <laughs> that f of x, f of x, I put an s there, f of x gets small when x, so it grows, it decreases without bound. It gets arbitrarily small. So um, I'll just say f of x uh, decreases without bound. when x is close to c, when x gets close to c, gets close to c. So it decreases uh, with, without bound, without, I'll improve my handwriting, without bound, without bound. Or you can say gets small. I just think of it as, as it gets small, it goes down forever. So basically this means the y value goes up forever, this means it goes down forever. That's it, that's the whole section in theory, almost. So uh, whenever this happens, Right, whenever this happens, we have a vertical asymptote at x equals c. So whenever, this happens, including the one-sided case. So like, let's say you approach c from the left. That still gives us the vertical asymptote, including, including the one-sided case. The one-sided case. We have a vertical asymptote. We have a vertical asymptote. Asymptote, big word. A S I M P tote at x equals c. So x equals c, rather, is the vertical asymptote. Let me just say vertical asymptote x equals c, because it's not at x equals c, it's a line, right? It's a vertical line. So Whenever you get infinity, you're going to have a VA, right? You're going to have a vertical asymptote, okay? You're not going to be using this to find vertical asymptotes. It's too much work. Most of the time, you'll just look at it and you know. I think we were doing it before, weren't we? With the removable and non-removable. Do you remember, were vertical asymptotes removable or were they non-removable? No. Yeah, but what about holes? Removable. There you go. You got five points on the test, right? That, that will definitely be on there no matter what. So typically when you're studying too, like if you just go over the examples from class, um, you, will, you will be set like for the most part, right? It's, it's stuff from class. We did a lot of hard ones too. So not all of the hard ones will be on there. I mean, we, did, we did a lot of stuff. Last time was insane. Like we did, I, I just felt insane. We did so much math. And there, was, there was no break, was there? It was like two, I'm sorry. Today will be much shorter. Like, don't worry. <laughs> so like, oh. Okay, let's... Let's do an example of a test question. Let's just start right away with like something that you'll see on your, it's like, because your test is next week. I feel like, oh my God, it's like, dude, we just started, right? <laughs> it's like, why is there a test? So, so on your test, you'll have a question like this. It'll be like six or seven parts, okay? Lots of points. Yeah, and then it'll say compute. 
you know, if possible. It'll also say, um, you know, use infinity, negative infinity, and D and E when appropriate. It'll also say no work necessary. I specifically will say this. Okay, so, because I'm not going to grade your work. Why? Because there's no nice way to show the work. The work is actually incorrect, right? The only way to compute these limits is like to prove them using like the definition, which we're not going to do. So we're just going to do whatever to get the answer. So A. <laughs> it's kind of fun. So just keep, keep in mind it's, it's wrong. So limit as x approaches 1 from the left of 1 over x minus 1. I, I don't know what the answer is. I haven't thought about it. But you could put it in your calculator and graph it and try to get the answer. If you plug in 1, it fails, right? Because you get 1 over 0, right? You get 1 over 0, so it doesn't work. So how do you do it? So let's see. So solution. So you have to think about it. So I think about it, it's a fraction. So no matter what, up top, 1 is a positive number, right? So you have a positive number. So you have a positive number. I'll put POS number. POS means positive. <laughs> positive number. <laughs> on the bottom, we have to figure out what's going on. So I like to draw a little picture. So I'll come over here and draw a little picture. So here's the line, the x-axis. Here's 1. We're approaching from the left, right? So we're going this way. So I just like to plug in a number that's really close to 1, but smaller. So like 0.99, right? So like 0.99 minus 1, right? So we're just writing down our thoughts. Right? You can do it in your head if you're feeling like a rock star, but I know, uh, yeah, I don't like doing stuff in my head, not, not too much. So positive number and that. So then this is positive number over negative, and then it's 0 0.01. Right? So I just made up a number. You could use any number, 0.9999. So basically you have, what you have is you have a positive number, then here you have a negative, and then you have a small number. So a super small number. That says super. You can't see. I don't know if you can see. It's a super small, super small number. It's a super small number. So if you have a number over something super small, I don't even know what happens to it. What happens to that fraction? It gets what? Really big. Really big. Yeah. So if you don't know that, think about this. If you have like, if you have like 10, if you have, if you have 1 over 0.1, that's actually 1 over 1 tenth. That's 10. If you have 1 over 0.01, that's 100. If you have 1 over 0.001, that's 1,000. I'm going to stop there because it gets too confusing. But when the, when the bottom gets small, the thing gets big. So small on the bottom, big fraction. So this, you have a positive number over something small. So this is big and it's negative. It's big and it's negative. So it's going to be negative infinity. Hey, what's up? Bring him in. <laughs> so, does that make sense? <laughs> no? A little bit? No? No? I'll go over it again. So, the top is a positive number, right? And then you just take any number you want that's smaller than 1, and because it's approaching from the left. So, like 0 0.99. So, 0 0.99 minus 1 is negative 0 0.01. So, you have a positive number over something super small. So, that's big. Then you have a negative, so it makes it negative infinity. That's it. Let's do another one. We're just going to keep doing these until you got it. Let's just, let's just do more. Let's just do more. B. 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 And again, the work doesn't matter. Like, you could do whatever, right? You can draw a picture of a horse. Like, it doesn't matter. So, like, I don't know why I said that. Let's approach... Let's approach 2. Let's keep it simple. 1 over x minus 2. And let's approach from the right. The homework is kind of weak. It's all right. I mean, this is a little bit harder. Like, these are better examples. Infinity. Very good. So, can't you just say if, it, if it's going from the right, it's positive infinity? So John, you're saying, so if it's approaching from the right, it's positive infinity? Yeah, in these cases, but if I do this game over. Oh. Ah, ha, ha, yeah, no, no. Yeah, <laughs> good, John, thinking. Good work. Uh, J J <laughs> Dennis, no. <laughs> no, no. J J uh, don't tell me, I'll figure it out. So let's work it out. So positive number, I should know, positive number. And we're approaching 2, so here's 2, and we're approaching from the right. What's a nice number that's bigger than 2 but closer to you? What's, what's a number? Well, it's really close. Or 2.1 or 2.1. Point. 
zero one. I'm really close. Yeah. So so two point oh one. You can do two point one too, but I'll do two point oh one minus two. You know, you'd have to do two point oh 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 one, but it doesn't matter. So this is a positive number, and this is 0.01. This is so. This is 0 0.01. 0 0.01. So you have a positive number over something small. That means it's big, right? Right. So this is infinity. That's it. That's it. Or is this like the limit? It's more like a positive number. And no, this is not correct. None of it's right. So none of this work is correct, anyways. That's why it says. <laughs> I can't grade it, right? Uh, I can't grade it. Uh, yeah. So, so that's why, because none of this is actually correct, right? This is like really, this is not, we're not really doing any correct work. We're just thinking, and that's why on the test I have to say, so I can't mark, I can't mark it wrong on this one. And that, that will help you on the test, because you'll know it's this type of problem when it says. That's huge. If it says solve analytically, those are the ones where like you have to factor. You don't put D and E on those. No, that's bad. Right? You want an answer on those, right? Or right, let's keep going. Let's just do more. I like these. I, I haven't done these in a long time. I don't know. C. Here we go. Oh, I know. I know. Limit. Ethan, like the yes. furniture. Sorry. <laughs> let's keep it simple for now. Do you all want to try this one, or should I do it? You want to try it? OK. All right, try it. Try it. Take your time. Try it. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try it. Try it. So many people here. It's like perfect attendance. Uh, Nick? Jason? What's the J? Jeff. No. no, it's not Jeff. It's not Jared. It's not Jason. John. Jono? Jordan. Yeah. <laughs> I guess I expect Jordan to be tall, like Michael Jordan. Like, right, that's <laughs> I, don't, I had a guy named Jordan in my class last night. He was really big. He was like tall. Good. Giant. You got it? I haven't even thought about it yet. Hey, all right, welcome back. What, any, what, anyone, what, what answer did you all get? Infinity. Infinity? Okay, let's try it. Let's try it. Let's see, so solution. Some people have a really hard time with this. I've had, I've had students in the past, really good students, they get A's, they take Calc 1, Calc 2, Calc 3, DE, they get A's in all the classes. But this, like, oh, I never understood this. It's just certain types of math are harder sometimes. So it's a positive number up top because it's one. Right? And then so here's, here's negative 3. We're approaching from the right, so let's see. Bigger than negative 3, so negative 2.9. Yeah, so negative 2.9, right? That'll work. So negative 2.9 plus 3. So it's a POS number. And then we have negative, point oh, negative point 0.1, right? Oh, oh, positive point 0.1. Is that a mistake? Even though I guess it is, because I mean, none of the work is right, anyways. No, I'll give you the point. Okay. I don't have a pen, so I can't write it down. Okay, just throw it. Thanks. I'm bleeding. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. <laughs> so this is. Do you all have any points for mistakes in this class? Yes. Yeah. You do? Really? Three? No. No. What's the Ryan? That's the wrong class. Mm -hmm. Hmm. I see the names. Logan? Who's Logan? Oh, Logan. I'm sorry. Logan, I'm sorry. <laughs> you have two. John has one. And who got that one? Was it everyone or just? Okay, everyone. All right. Everyone gets two points. Here you go, Logan. I won't throw it. Here. Good work. Thank you. So, yeah. That's good. You, you might need the points. No. So, so, so it's going to be infinity. Positive over something small. So this is big. So it's infinity. Good. Let's do another one. Let's keep going. We'll just do as many as it takes, right? Let's just do a bunch of these. So, Because you want to get all these right. This is like 15, 20 points on a test, right? A, B, C, D. Hey, let's try this one. I'll, I'll, I'll help you with this one. Four from the left. And it'll be, um, oh, let's be weird. One minus X over X minus four. I'll work this one out for you. Over X minus four. 
So 1 minus x over x minus 4. So you can actually plug in the 4 in the numerator this time. So you get 1 minus 4, um, so you get negative 3, right? So you get 1 minus 4, and then uh, think about 4. So from the left, this is so bad, like we're plugging in different numbers, we're doing, we're just, it's just so bad. Uh, 3.9, right? 3.9 would work. So 3.9 minus 4, it's just so bad. Negative 3, so I'm just going to put negative number. And then on the bottom, it's going to be negative 0.1. Didn't mess up that time. Negative 0.1. Oh, negative and negative becomes positive. positive. So what's this going to be? Infinity. Infinity. You got this. Infinity. So it helps give you some intuition. Yes, sir? Uh, you have 1 minus 4. Which one is 1 minus 4 9? I know. I'm being really bad. I'm plugging in different numbers, which is super wrong. Okay. Yeah, it's just all bad. Yeah. It should be 1 minus 3.9. It should. Uh, you should. Good. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it should. I mean, I feel bad. I'm not going to, I'll just do that there. <laughs> Negative number. That's more correct, even though none of it's correct. So it's infinity. Let's do another one. E. Check this one out. This one's really interesting. Limit. This is our first one like this. X approaches 2 from both directions. Okay. Ooh. Yeah, yeah. X minus 2 squared. Yeah, squared. The nice thing about doing one section a day is, sure, some sections are intense, but like this one, this one's after that, we're almost done. We have a couple more things. And positive infinity. Yeah, the answer is infinity. Yeah. Um, two ways to think about it. One, you can put it in your calculator, graph it. Two, you know the graph and you can do it in your head. Three, plug in anything you like. You have a positive number. If you approach from the left, if you do, if you do 1.9 minus 2, you get a positive number, and then you get negative 0.1 squared. When you square a number between 0 and 1, it becomes even smaller. So this is going to be a POS number over something super small. So it's big. So it's infinity. So it's infinity. So when you square it, it becomes positive no matter what. Yes, Reese? Yeah, because it's squared. Yeah, you just say, hey, no matter what you plug in, it's going to be positive. Yeah, that's even better. Yeah, that's even more pro. Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. but yeah. For the test, um, can I just put like infinity or negative infinity? Yeah. Have to show you don't have to show any work. No, it's gone, but no work necessary at all. <laughs> yeah, you don't have to show any work. Mm -mm. Yeah, you can do anything. You can, you can graph it in your calculator. If you have a calculator, you know how to use it. You can put this in there. If you graph this in the calculator, watch this. Another way. Check it out. I, I've, never, I never, I've never talked about this ever, ever. I don't know why, because I'm bad. This is the volcano function. That's how I memorize it. And it's shifted to the right by two. So it looks like this. So it just goes to infinity, right? Do you remember this from college algebra? The volcano? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I haven't taught college algebra in a while. So. Actually, I subbed for the college algebra yesterday. That was interesting. Any, uh, any questions? Any questions on, on in this room? I was, I was in this room yesterday. They're completing the square. All right, let's do something else. Uh, oh, I know. I know. I know. I know. I know. Check this out. Let's, let's just go nuts. A, B, C, D, E, F, F. F is next. Right, F, F. Uh, failed. No, I'm kidding. Limit. <laughs> Let's approach. Let's approach. This one's really hard. This one, I might be in the homework. There used to be a teacher. He doesn't work here anymore. He's a friend of mine. And I ran into him in the hallway one day. And he goes, hey, check this out, man. And he gave me this problem. <laughs> yeah, this is really evil. This X. What's worse than cosine? Secant. <laughs> it's ridiculous. It's about as hard as it gets. We'll do a couple of these until you get it too. So throw a trig function in there and it makes it a little bit harder. So, so secant is one over what function? Do you all know? Cosine. cosine, yeah. And if you don't know, it's okay. Um, there's a really easy way to memorize it. Um, 
at least the way I do it is I know it's one over the one that starts with the other letter. So it has to be cosine. Right, because it starts with C. And then cosecant is one over the other letter. So sine. Yeah, the other letter trick is really good. Is that how you all do it too with the other letter? Really? Oh, so I'm not alone in my weird. Good, good, good. <laughs> it's great. It's amazing how humans are like similar, like similar, deep. Uh, I'm gonna rewrite it again. That's bothering me. I'm gonna write it like this. So basically, we, we are rewriting it in a way that will allow us to think about it a little more clearly, right? So, so if it was cosecant, it'd be one over sine. Might be one over sine. Okay, so uh, up top, it's going to be simple, right? What type of number are we going to have up top? Positive or negative? Positive. positive. Yeah, positive. So I'll, I'll put POS number. Okay, the bottom part is tough. I guess there's two ways of doing it. You could use the unit circle. I, I'll, I'll try to do it that way. I'll struggle with that, but I think I can hand. I think I can do it. The graph might be easier. Think about the graph of cosine. So the graph of cosine, if you don't know it, just memorize one point. What's the cosine of zero? One. one. So it starts here, right? Sine starts here. And then it's a wave, so it does this. Okay. And then you know that this is pi over two. Because cosine of pi over two is zero. I have that one memorized. So this is the graph of cosine, right? This is cosine x. Okay. So x is approaching pi over two from the right. So x is coming from this way, right? So are the y values negative or are they positive here? Negative. negative. So it's negative and it's super small. The reason it's super small is because it's really close to zero. It's like negative point oh 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 one, right? So then this is going to be negative infinity. Really slick. Yeah, the guy who showed me this, I remember because, yeah, really really slick. Mm -hmm. I wonder what happened to him. I used to have his phone number, but I. I, I had to get a new phone. Um, so yeah, yeah, really sneaky. He's like, check this out, I'm gonna put it on their test. I'm like, whoa! Like, <laughs> yeah, it's hard, right? It's really sneaky. Any questions? It's, yes? Why is the bottom super small again? Like, I mean, negative? Good. Because, okay, so this is, the x is approaching pi over two from the right, right? And so the y values are here where my marker is. So you see, this is the x-axis. So all these y values are negative down here. That's why. Right? And they're getting close to zero, so they're small, right? Because this is the y-axis. So these are positive y's. So if, if, it was, if it was from the left, it'd be positive. Yep. Good question. Good question. Let's do another one. Let's do another one. Let's do one more. A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Let's try uh, limit uh, x approaches. Let me look at the homework for ideas because, oh, I know, I know. Uh, this one, this is in the homework, it's perfect. This is number, um, ah, number 15 in the homework. Number 15. Do you all want to try this one or should I do it? Me do it? Okay, all right. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> all right, so up top, uh, we have a POS number, right? So that's easy. So positive number up top. This one's not as hard as the secant one. And then we have to think about sine on the bottom. Sine of zero is zero. So let's draw the graph of sine. So it looks like this, and et cetera. It keeps going, you know. That's a terrible graph, but yeah. So here's zero. So we're approaching from the right. So the y values, when we approach from the right, will they be positive or will they be negative? Positive, positive. yeah, positive, right? Because they're up here. So it'll be super small and positive. So it's just infinity. Yeah? So if we have super big in the denominator, is mm -hmm. it going to be negative infinity since it's an infinitely No. Small? Oh! Super big in the... Denominator. So like you Yes. Have yes. We haven't done that though. But yes, just, just for fun because we talked about it. H. Not on the test, but let's say we had... We haven't done this yet. You see a lot of this in Calc 2 and in Chapter 3 in this course. If you have like 1 over x, yeah, this would be 0. We haven't talked about this yet. But basically, when x gets really, really big on the bottom, the fraction gets really, really small. Think of it as like 1 over 10 is 0.1. 1 over 100 
is 0 0.01. 1 over 1,000 <laughs> almost messed up, is 0 0.001. So this is 0. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that, that comes up later a lot. That's a big deal. Yeah. Does the sine graph go down into the negative zero? It does over here. So it looks like this. So sine of zero is zero, and it does this, doesn't it? Yeah. So how do we know, like, from the right, coming from the right? Yeah. Oh, you're here. You're really close. Oh, okay. So it's just yeah. right. Yeah. Ever hear what Ethan asked? He had a really good question. He said, wait a minute. How do you know if, it's, if you're coming from this way, how do you know it's not up here or down here, right? You, you have to be really, really close. How close? As close as you can possibly get mentally so there. Good question, Ethan. Very good question. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. It's really good. Good. Good stuff. I like this. I don't know why. Oh, okay. What's this? What is going on here? We should do 16. Let's do it. Uh, X approaches pi over 2 from the right. So this is A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, I, I, I. It's a pirate. Limit. X approaches. Anyone have the homework up? 16? From the right? And what's the, oh, oh. <laughs> what's the, uh, negative nine. <laughs> all right. Do y'all want to try this one? You should try it. You should try it. Yeah, try it. I believe in you. You got this. Try it. Try it. You got this, Aaron. And not, uh, sorry. Judah. Judah. You're sitting somewhere else today. Yeah, my laptop is there. Oh. What'd you get? Negative, Negative uh, inf infinity? Okay. That's one possible answer. I mean, I don't know. I don't know. It's wrong? Oh. <laughs> it's positive infinity? You all figured it out? Really? Oh, it's so good. All right, let's work it out. I can't believe you're getting this. This is like a massive source of confusion. This is probably like the hardest problem in the entire section. Um, it's like a calculus killer. So let's see. Up top, it's a negative number. So negative number. On the bottom, I gotta think about the graph of cosine. Let's see, so I gotta draw it. So cosine of zero is one, so it does this. So this is pi over two. We're approaching from the right. Ah, so it's negative and it's super small. So it's negative and small. So that means it's big. So that means it's infinity. Yeah, yeah, this here? Yeah, yeah, I did it really fast. Okay, so check it out. So here's pi over 2. So we're approaching pi over 2 from the right. So the y values are negative down here, right? Yeah, see how it's negative here? Yeah, and then so it's negative and small. Negative, negative is positive, so it's big. If it was over here, it'd be positive, right? Yeah, right before, like Ethan was asking. It's tough, right? It's tough, it's tough. You think you got this? You want to do another one? It's up to you. Let's do another another one. Good. A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J. Really want to keep seeing you, right? L, M, N, O, P, or K. L, M, N, O, P. Whoa, what's going on here? We should do 17. It looks really good. I must have assigned like the hardest possible problems. This is ridiculous. Like, <laughs> I didn't, didn't even know this was, I hadn't even looked at the homework until now, actually. So I assigned it, but... <clears throat> If it's bad, I can always delete it. See, that's the thing. It's a nice thing about homework, online homework. It's really easy to unassign it. I just hit a button and it's gone. Cosy context. Oh, this is kind of uh, this is kind of interesting. Maybe I should do this one for you. Um, Cause, I mean, or do you want to try it? It's really tricky. It's really easy. But you want to try it? Yeah, try it. I mean, I don't think I. I, I I, was like, I don't think you'll be able to do it, but try it, try it, try it, try it, try it, try it. Yeah, I know, I didn't want to say it. It's really sneaky. I probably would not do this to you on a test because it feels a little bit wrong, but try it. I I'll try not to. I wouldn't intentionally do it. I'll put it up. <laughs> hey, did someone leave a canteen here? Mm -hmm. 
Wow, for water only. Do not apply canteen to open flame or burner plates. I'm going to leave it. <laughs> Must have been someone from my other class. It's hardcore. It's like, go live in the woods. <laughs> did you get it, Logan? You did? What? I don't want to say it. What'd you get? No, what's wrong? It's wrong. Yeah, see, that's why I was like, oh. Did you get it, Judah? Did you get what Logan got? Huh? You didn't call me the right name. Uh, jo Jordan? That's a point, right? No. Uh. Anyone, anyone get the answer? Anyone? What'd you get? Zero. It's zero. It's zero! It's zero! Oh! We thought about it, but they were like, no. No, it, it is zero. Good, Judah, good. Yeah, so the, this is evil because you actually do get an answer in this case, watch. So cosecant is one over sine, right? <coughs> You can actually show the work in this case, which is kind of evil because <laughs> the question says don't show work. And then when you divide by 1 over sine, you really multiply by the reciprocal. Yeah. So if I gave you a question like this on your test, it would say show work, right? There is one like this, I think, with cotangent in one of the previous sections. So this is 9 square root of x times sine x. And then now you can plug in the pi, so you get 9 square root of pi. Who cares about the one-sidedness of it? It's ridiculous. It's like they put it in there on purpose just to be tricky. Uh, sine of pi is 0, right? This is 9 square root of pi times 0, so you get, so you get 0. So kind of a nice problem, but again, I, I will not purposely try to put this mixed in. I haven't, it's happened before in the past, like a typo. Like, I'll, I'll, like, accidentally one semester I did this. Right, because I was in a hurry, because, you know, I just wanted to make the test and do something else, just, you know. And, and then so, you just plug in the one. Right, but people were putting like, oh, infinity, like, you're like, no, <laughs> you're like, no. And I was like, oh, it's a typo. I'm like, oh, they're smart, right? So I just, like, a few people got it wrong. That's kind of evil, though, right? Because you get so used to the infinity and negative infinity, then you forget you can actually plug it in, right? Yeah. So for number 17, I did it using the cosecant graph. Like, if you approach pi in the cosecant graph, it's going to be infinity, positive infinity. Oh. So anything over positive infinity is zero, technically. Right, very good. You still get it. Okay. That's beautiful, yeah. That's, that's great. That's amazing. No, it's really deep. No one does that. That's like, <laughs> that's great. Yeah. Now on the test, if it says show work analytically, though, you do have to show work. That's the only thing. Yeah. Like you have to show like some work. Like, yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's talk about something else. Um, vertical asymptotes. I think you've, you've seen these before. Um, so let's do, let's do a couple uh, vertical asymptotes. So, so, yeah, let's do it. So last time, so last time we had this this formula uh, involving sine and cosine, which was very useful. Um, and we're just, we're just going to do it again today. It's because why not? It's probably on your test. Sine x is equal to zero. Remember this with the k pi. We're going to do it again. Uh, this is the same thing as saying that x is equal to a multiple of pi. That means it's k pi. And there was something we had to say uh, about k. Do you all remember what it was? It's an integer. So you can say where k is an integer. Did I show you the other way of doing it, the fast way? Remember that? So I'm going to do this instead, where k, and then we use this symbol here, belongs to, this means belongs to, yep. And then the z, remember the z, like this, the fancy z? Z. So K is inside this set. K is an element of the set. What is this? Z is the set of all integers. This is, this is worldwide language, right? Math, people say, I mean, some people will say math is like another language. It is, it is, except languages I think are harder. Like it's probably harder to learn like Japanese, <laughs> right, than it is to learn this because there's more letters and they, they form words. This is just one symbol. So this is the set of integers. So this means k is one of these numbers. Right. So 
The word, they use Z because uh, I think in German, um, the word for numbers is Salen, I think. That's what it says in Wikipedia, so. I don't speak German, I just know that. So. And a bad word, which I can't say. So, and then we have cosine of, does anyone here speak German, anyone? No, okay, I was hoping you'd say it the right way, but okay, so cosine of X is equal to zero. This is equivalent to saying x equals pi over 2 plus, plus k pi, plus k pi. And again, where k is an element in the set of integers. So very, very common notation. If you're wondering where you learn this, um, you learn this in like um, a discrete math class if you're a computer science major, or if you study math, as a major, you learn it in like a, a logic and proof class for math majors. But otherwise, you don't really see this, right? Maybe you might touch on it in, in intermediate algebra. Has anyone ever seen this before today, like before this class? Where have you seen it? Just, um, just around. Just around? Like like logic and proof books. Yeah, with Zimmerman's class. Okay, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's not something that's typically taught. Um, most of the classes here, like all these calc classes and stuff, they're typically ba they're geared towards people who are going into engineering, right, and physics, uh, science, stuff like that. So we do a lot of like a different type of math, more calculus. Okay, so let's find some VAs. Let's do it. So find, so find, find some asymptotes. So you'll have you'll have this on your test. So find VA. So redo these examples, right? So find VA. So redo. We do the last example too, right? When you're studying for the test. So find VAs. So A. So maybe there's one in the homework that's decent. Like test level, no, those are all weak. Mm -mm. No, yeah, or I guess this one, number nine. So this is number nine from the homework. F of X equals, one's okay. Yeah, it's pretty good. It's got a nine there, it makes it look confusing. Tangent of pi x, tangent of pi x. All right, so when you're looking for VAs, just think about whenever it's a trig function, think about what's on the bottom. You don't have to write it down, but you can, yeah. It's not question nine, it's eight. Oh, it's eight? Um, yeah, eight. Are you sure? It is. Is that a point or is that a math error? Or? I don't know. That's your error. Okay. All right. So, so this is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> so this is nine. Uh, so tangent is, is sine over cosine. Sine, sine over pi x over cosine. Thank you. <laughs> What's your name? Christina. Christina. Okay. I'll give you Christine. Christina. Point. So it's good. It's good. That's your life. It doesn't affect me, right? Doesn't. Yeah. No. 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 It's no effect on my life. Right? It won't matter in 30 years. Okay. This is the fraction. So we want to know when the bottom is zero, right? That's what it has a VA. So you take the bottom and set it equal to zero. Right. You want to know when. when that's what you want to know. You can show where. You can skip this step, right? You can go straight to the next step. So cosine of pi x is equal to zero. So you may say, what happened here? What happened to the nine? What happened to the sine? Well, we're, it's a logical move. It's like we're thinking, when is this undefined? It's undefined when the bottom is zero. So cosine of x equals zero when x is equal to pi over two plus k pi, right? So you just take this, right? This whole thing, right? So pi x equals uh, pi over two plus k pi. Any questions on that step? I'm going to see how we did that. So when I'm taking the test, because I have to take the test too, because I have to grade it, I need the answers, right? Uh, I don't do any of this. No. Why, right? I just say, oh, okay, tangent is sine over cosine. Oh, cosine's on the bottom. Right, so you can skip all of this. Just think about what's on the bottom. Oh, cosine's on the bottom, so just take this and set it equal to that. If sine's on the bottom, you just set it equal to k pi. You don't have to show all this work. Right? How do, yeah, how do we solve? How do we solve for x? What do we multiply by or divide by? 
pi. divide by pi. So it might be easier to multiply by the reciprocal of pi. It just, it's just a little bit easier to show the work. So I'm going to multiply by 1 over pi. So 1 over pi times 1 over pi. <laughs> okay, I thought of something. Uh, these cancel. So this is equal to x equals, right, x equals, it's really important to write the x because it's a line, okay, it's a vertical asymptote. I'm going to show every step, pi over 2 times 1 over pi, so pi over 2 times 1 over pi plus k pi times 1 over pi. Right, you can skip steps, right? I, I don't like to, it's easy to uh, mess up. And these cancel, so we get x equals 1 half plus k. And then we just have to say that last thing, right? It's really important where k is an element in the set of integers. That's it. That's it. Hey, all right. Yes? Yeah, the homework actually has, yeah, they want n though. Oh, you mean the k part? No, no. And they tell you to use n, I think. Good question. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on this one? Anyone like this stuff besides me? Anyone? I don't like this. Yeah, it's not bad, right? Yeah, it's trig, but it's like better than trig. It's not like, I don't know. There's some weird stuff in trig. So, all right, let's do another one. How about, um, uh, number, how about this one, number nine? So B. B is number nine from the homework. Number nine. Uh, can someone read me number nine? Is it F of X or F of T? F of T? S, like in like Superman? Yes. Like this? Yep. Really? I believe you. Okay. And it's equal to? And the homework wants you to use n. Okay. And they have a little box you have to fill that in. I want to do this one and explain it. I'll, I'll, and then we'll do more after this. So same thing. We're looking for the vertical asymptotes. So we think about when sine t is equal to 0. Right? Sine t is equal to 0 when t is equal to, well, it's k pi normally, right? But we have to use n, so it'll be n pi. That's it. That's it. That's it. And then n here is an integer, right? This was a test. So you can use n or you can use k. It doesn't matter, right? You can use any of those letters, variables. The homework has a little box, though, and it tells you that n can't be equal to something, okay? Uh, I believe n can't be equal to 0, right? n can't be equal to 0, okay? Because if n is 0, so n here is not zero. This is really deep. So aside, I'll have an aside. Well, first of all, any questions on this before I go over the, that, the next tricky part? Okay, the homework says that n, you're supposed to do this for the homework. Here's why. If n is equal to zero, t is also going to be equal to zero, right? And then you'll get zero over zero, and you're gonna get a hole, okay? So it's not a VA. The homework wants VAs. It's really sneaky, okay? So if n is equal to 0, then t is 0. So this is 0 over 0, so you get a hole. So you have to throw that away. Don't worry, you're not going to see something that tricky like on an exam, in an exam situation. That's just like, ugh. the first time I saw the homework problem, I'm like, what? What's going on? Like, what? I'm like, oh, they think they're smart. Like, oh, trying to throw away the 0. <laughs> like, <laughs> so. so that's that one. Here, let me give you another one. A, B, C. Here's another good test one. C. Uh, uh, oh, since we're using new letters, how about H for hard? H of x equals uh, 2 cosecant 4x. Why don't you all try to do this one? Take like two minutes, three minutes. Yeah. Yeah, sure. It's going to follow me, though. It's okay, but I'll, I'll just delete this. Oh, look, I, I outran it. No, it's just really weak and broken. Oh, you have to put t equals, because it's an equation, right? It's a vertical asymptote. See, there it goes. Hey, all right, it's back. <laughs> I used to have a better one, and they, 
yeah. That's, they made me give it back, like after I borrowed it, and they gave me this one instead. So, like it used to be really good, it would like follow me really quick. That's not mine, so. Did you get it? Hmm? Did you get it? Really? You all got it? Did you get it? What'd you get? I don't know. It's fine. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think so. I think so, right? Is it? It is? Yes! All right, let's do it. Solution. That's what I mean, solution. So, huh? Where k is an integer. So cosecant is 1 over which function? Sine. Yeah, the other letter. Good. So you can write it like this if you wanted to. Sine of 4x. So you just think about when is sine 4x equal to 0. So sine 4x equals 0. Oh, broke the marker. Um, it's, like, it's like it went in. OK, that's all right. Uh, I can't use my mouth. OK, that's really gross, right? Yes, yeah, nasty. So 4x equals, so what goes here? Do you remember? K pi, K pi. This is really useful, not just for this class, right? I I, I didn't even learn this in calculus, right? Yeah. It's to be H pi or no? no, 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 no. no. Huh? What's the H pi? Oh, that's just the name of the function. I just wanted it to be weird because see over here it was S. Oh, okay. Yeah. Oh, it's yeah. It's yeah. I just, I just, yeah. It makes. I'm glad you asked. No, it's good. It worked. I <laughs> need to find. So, so someone would ask. So divide by four. So x equals k pi over 4. What's missing? An integer. Where k is an integer. Yep. So you're just supposed to say comma, k is an element in the set of integers. I'm not judging. It's good. It's good. Pistachios are the best. So that's it. That's it. <clears throat> Let's do another one. Just one more. One more. D. You've already done this, by the way. Yeah. Oh, I thought you had a question. No, it's okay. Do you have to leave? No, it's not too oh, sorry. Okay, sorry. It's just, it's just really bad. Sorry. I'm sorry. That's fine. Yeah, it's... <laughs> what? Oh, I didn't hear what he said. It doesn't matter. I don't. I, don't... I didn't hear anything. What did he say? Oh, <laughs> that's great. X squared plus four x plus five. <clears throat> <laughs> do you want me to do it? Or do you think you can do this one? I'm going to give you, like, take 30 seconds, try it, and then I'll do it. After this, we'll do something else. So, we did this before. Right. Yeah, go ahead and try it now. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> I was like, they look confused. Like, I know they can factor. They're pretty good. Like, <laughs> it's me, not you. <laughs> you know, last semester they had a take home test, I think, for this class. Because they had the hurricane, right? Wasn't that the hurricane? Yeah. I know. There's no hurricane. I know. Mm -hmm. I know. It's just not fair. <laughs> <It's not. clears throat> I'm going to do it. I, I can't wait. <laughs> X plus 1. This should factor, right? Yeah. Now, now, yeah, now it should factor, right? So it's X plus 1, X plus 3. It should factor now. Is, is that right? Yeah. yeah, okay, good. What cancels? X plus 1. Yes, we get 1 over X plus 3. Then you just set the bottom equal to 0. So you get X plus 3 equals 0. So you get X equals negative 3. It's really important to have the X equals, right, in this case, because it's a vertical asymptote. So basically, to find vertical asymptotes in a rational function, we do, we, I think we've done this before, you cancel, and then you set the bottom equal to 0. And since there's no K, you don't have to put work in. Right, that's only with the trig functions. Yes, Logan. This is an offset question. Why wouldn't they put, like, they'll put, like, x cannot equal 0. Why don't we do that with vertical asymptotes? Where? It's identifying that the vertical asymptote is at or 
x equals negative 3, or we're saying that x cannot equal negative 3 because it's a vertical asymptote? No, we're saying that the vertical asymptote is x equals negative 3. Okay. Good question. By the way, what happens at negative 1? What do we have there? A hole. Is it removable or non-removable? Yeah, what about this one? Is it non-removable? Yeah, good. So that's, a, that's another question you'll have probably, right? So two different questions. One where you have to find a VA, and then one where you just answered what you just did. And then you have the trig ones. Those have the K in them, right? And then you have the limits where you don't show work. That's like 30 points right there, right? So, so yeah. In theory, like if you didn't do any homework and you just went over your notes, in theory, in theory, in theory, you, should be able, you can get 100, right? Um, let me show you how to do something else, okay? That's later, just in case you want to do some homework. And I'm also going to show you how to cheat and get all of the answers to the homework in the next section also. But first let me, let's do a problem. I'm gonna do one problem from 2.1. So we haven't done this, so I'll pretend we didn't do this next time. Next time when you come in, because we're done with 1.5, We'll, we'll do two one like this, like forty five minutes of notes. It's like it's deep, and um, and then we'll do two one again. We'll do this again next time because this is like a lot of points on the test. So I'm gonna do. I'm gonna call it an example. I'm gonna call it an example, and um, we'll say find the. So you might not know what this is. It's okay. I'll, I'll tell you. Find the derivative. using the definition. So using the definition. So this is like a 10 point question on your test. And you'll probably have like two of these, right? Mm -hmm. Probably like two, it's not bad. Most people get it right. Even if it look, you're like, oh, it's kind of hard. No, nah, you'll get it right. Like if you study, you'll get it right. You'll get it right. If you study, yeah, if you study. What's your name? Austin. Austin, really? Yes. Oh, wait, no, oh, never mind. Oh, okay. <laughs> Nothing. No, it doesn't matter. There's a guy in my other class, his name is also Austin, but he was sitting over there. <laughs> so I'm just <laughs> so confused. It's too many people. So, uh, so the function is f of x equals, let's see, one that will probably be on the test. Um, ah, okay, okay, yeah, yeah, this seems like a good one. I don't want to do it, but it's probably going to be on there. One over x plus two. So solution. All right, so but you'll probably have two of these on your test, right? Uh, every semester, every calculus class in the entire world uh, does this. This is like one of those problems. So the first, so the formula for the derivative, whatever that is, well, let me just tell you. So if you have a straight line, right? Like say you have, say you have um, like y equals 2x plus 3. So this is mx plus b, right? What's the slope of this line? Two, m is two, right? So for straight lines, we have the slope, right? It's the rise over run. So in calculus, we talk about rates of change, right? So we have random functions, and so we want to find out what the slope of is of a random function. Well, the slope is going to change, right? So it's going to be like a slope function. So to find the slope for a function, it's going to change. It's not constant. It's not a constant slope. So the derivative is the slope of the function. So the derivative is the slope. So we're going to construct it from scratch next time at the beginning of class. It's really beautiful. For now, we're just going to use the formula. So the formula for the derivative is f, and then you put, I'll do it here, f, and then you put a symbol here. It's f prime, p-r-i-m-e, like prime. f prime of x, and it's equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of what's called the difference quotient, which you learn, which you study briefly in college algebra. In college algebra, they make you compute this. Uh, it's like on a test, and you compute it, and you work it out. In this class, we do the same thing, except at the end of the problem, we just plug in 0 for h. So this is the formula for the derivative, right? You may have seen this in the homework before, except instead of h, it had something else notorious. Do you remember what it was? The delta x, I know. It's like, oh, I recently, I recently, like, I just morn this morning, I posted a video that, from the homework, the one over x plus three. When I did it, I finally posted, and it's got a delta x in it. I'm like, oh, the delta x makes it so much harder. So we'll be using h. All right. So let's do this problem. So all you have to do is work this out. Okay. So keep in mind, whenever you write the limit sign, you have to continue to write it. So you have a choice. You can write it every single time from the beginning or you can wait to the very end to write it. 
let's wait to the very end to write it. <laughs> so, so I'm not going to write it first. I'm just going to start with this. It's really important to show the work correctly. So maybe step one, write the formula down. So the formula, you'll have to memorize it, but you'll know it. There's a gazillion of these in the homework. So I'll show you, after this, I'll show you how to get the answers to the homework using the internet in case you don't want to do them all, right? Because there's so many, right? Your, your hand will burn out. So this is equal to, so f of x plus h means we replace all of the x's here with x plus h's. So instead of one over x plus two, it's one over x, x, x plus h over two. Very good, yes. So all we've done is replace x with x plus h. So this is this. Everyone see it? Because f of x, I'll write it up here. f of x, which was taller, is this. So f of x plus h, you just put an x plus h there. See? x plus h. x plus h. Does everyone see it? Maybe, maybe I'll write it down here. Maybe this will make it better. Watch. This is this. This is this. This is this. This is this. And this is just f of x. And then you still have the h. Let me pause here and let you catch up. So this is this. This is this. I'll, I'll pause. I'll pause. Hey! Welcome back. Any questions on that? That's, that's a hard thing in college algebra for people to grasp. So f of x is 1 over x plus 2. So f of blah is 1 over blah plus 2. So f of x plus h is 1 over x plus h plus 2. You're just replacing the x's with the x plus h. Everyone get it? Everyone get that step? Yeah. OK. All right. So now uh, we have to subtract these. The way I do it is it's kind of cheap. I just write down the product, because that's going to be the LCD. OK, so I just know that that will work. So it's going to be x plus h plus 2 times x plus 2. And then we still have the h here, right? So, so we haven't figured this out yet. I just write it down first. I just know it's this times this on the bottom, OK? Ah, it's good water. OK, um, so then it's going to be 1 <laughs> times, and then here you have this, but you want this. What's missing here? x plus 2, so it's 1 times what's missing. I don't know where I learned that, but it works. Minus, and then it's 1 times what goes here? Good, very good. This is so, there's a lot of points on your test, okay? It's like final exam type stuff, so you usually have one in your final like this too. So it's really important. Let me pause here, I'll go over it again. Notice I added those parentheses there. They were already there, it's just no one ever talks about it, right? They're here, look, there's parentheses here. There's really a parentheses here, but no one ever does it. Why, because it's weird, right? But there is, if, you, if I write two over three, there's really parentheses there. And you can put a one there, right? You can do that, it's the same thing. Like, they're implied. Okay, so again, it's one times what's missing, x plus two, minus one times what's missing, x. So here we can distribute. So it'll be x plus 2 minus x minus h minus 2 over, then we have x plus h plus 2, x plus 2 over h. I'm going to show you something really cool after this. Like how to get the answers. It's really exciting. It's really, like, it's really, really cool website. It's free. Oh, I gotta show you something else too. Okay, so stuff goes away. Boom, 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 boom. So we have negative h over x plus h plus two, x plus two, and it's still in parentheses. All over h, all over h. Take your time, it's a lot of writing. <clears throat> the parentheses are important because it's this entire thing divided by h, right? This entire thing divided by h. When you divide by h, what do you really multiply by? The reciprocal, very good, which is 1 over h. So this is equal to, this is why I assigned that annoying delta x problem. I figured most people would get stuck on it, but it's good. Like, because eventually you'll get it, and then like, when we do it, 
on Monday, which is when we're doing this, we're not really doing it today, this is, this is not really happening, um, it'll be like, oh yeah, okay, I've seen it before. So then this is x plus h plus 2, x plus 2. So in college algebra, this would be like a hard college algebra problem. You would stop here, right? And you would call that the difference quotient. Okay, we're almost done. We're almost done. The next step is just a formality, and it's very uh, simple. So. Wait. So any any questions? Some people are writing still, so I'll wait. Forgot that thing was there. Like I just, <laughs> I was like, what? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> forget. Like, yeah. Okay. No questions. No questions. All right. So we worked out this piece, right? So now we just got to take the limit. So to finish, f prime of x, right? Because so we have to find the derivative of f at x, this is the slope of the function at x, is equal to the limit as h approaches 0 of this. So negative 1 over x plus h plus 2, and then x plus 2. It's really important that you show your work correctly. Again, notice I didn't write the limit at the beginning. If I write the limit at the beginning, that's fine, but you have to write it here, 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 and you have to write it here. That's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven times. So it's seven times more work. Or I have to write it seven times, so I wanted to avoid that. So it's better to not write it and wait to the very end, okay, and then write it. And that way you can't get it wrong, because I can't take points off because it's correct. But if you write it once, like if you write it here, like if you do this, and then you don't write it here, I have to mark some, I have to take points off, because it's wrong. Like I can't, I can't be like, oh, it's whatever, no, it's wrong. It's a math class, like, right, it's gotta be right, <laughs> to mark it right. <laughs> Even if I wanna mark it right, and I, I can't unless it's right. So now we're gonna take the limit, so we're gonna plug in the zero. Do we write the limit again now? No. no, we drop it, right? Good, good! So this is going to be negative one over, so this is zero, right? So it'll be x plus two, x plus 2. So it'll be x plus 2 times x plus 2 is x plus 2 squared. Yeah, and just leave it like that. A lot of times when people first see calculus, they're like, oh, should I multiply it out? No, no, just leave it. That's beautiful. That's better that way. Just, just leave it. That's it. That's it. That's called the derivative of the function. On the second test, you'll be able to do this, if you're really ready for this, in your head, like using some formulas and stuff. Like, oh yeah, yeah, like you'll be able to do some math. Like, I could do it in my head. Not, not this, there's another, there's shortcuts. Yeah, you get really good at it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you get really good at it. And if you take Calc 2, you become even better. If you take all of them, then you're like, yeah, it's really good. Any questions on this one? So this is pretty much, all, yeah, yeah, Jordan. I was about to ask, like, where, where do we get this from? Like, why is this true? What, what is this? Why is it true? Why is this true? Yeah. Like how do we how did we get that? Like how does it work out if we were to have a? I'm gonna show you really quick. Just I'm gonna do it really fast. Okay, just like five minutes. Okay, so I'll do it again next time. But I, I, five minutes. So I'm just no three minutes. Okay, so you have a graph like this. We're gonna call this x. I want to call this x plus h. And the goal here, the goal is to find the slope at x. Okay. So what you do is you connect these dots and you draw a triangle. So the y value at x is f of x. The y value at x plus h is f of x plus h. Now, the run, it's run, the slope of this line, this line has a name. This line is called the secant line. And the slope of the secant line, it's rise over run. So the rise is this, the run is this. The rise is this minus this. This minus this gives you this. This minus this gives you this. So the rise is f of x plus h minus f of x. So it's f of x plus h minus f of x. And the run is this minus this, or just this distance, which is h. So this monster, is the slope of the secant line. What's a secant line? You can do anything like this, take any two dots and connect them, it's a secant line. Secant line, secant line. 
Secret means it cuts in Latin, according to this guy I met once. So the slopes, <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I met him at like this high, like this, uh, this high school competition in Oviedo or something. He's like, yeah, he was really cool. He used to be a math major, but he couldn't, that doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> yeah, he couldn't get through advanced calculus, so he decided to teach Latin. Anyways, secant means it cuts. So that's the slope of the secant line. So here's where you have to use your imagination. If you let h go to zero, what happens? So h is getting small, so it's going this way, right? So what happens? When h gets small, this point goes this way. So we get a secant line. We get secant line, secant line, secant line, secant line, secant line, secant line. We get infinitely many secant lines. The secant lines approach a line that just touches out at this point. That line is called the tangent line. Okay. So when you let, when you take the limit, ah, I can't spell. When you take the limit, when you let h approach zero. So if you take the limit as h approaches zero of the slope of the secant line, what happens is you have infinitely many secant lines, because h is going this way. h is getting small, so this point's going this way. So you have secant line, secant. So the secant lines approach the tangent line. So the slopes of the secant lines approach the slope of the tangent line. Now we say that this is the slope of the tangent line. So loosely speaking, it's the slope of the function. We call it the derivative. So that's the derivation. It's really, it took three minutes. Does that make sense at all? It did? Even just a little bit? Did it make any sense? A little bit? Okay. We'll do it next time, but it'll take us 20 minutes. Yeah, so 15. So what you're saying is the derivative is the tangent line of the function? It's the slope of the tangent line. Okay, slope of the tangent line. Yep. That's the most important thing. That's, that's calc one. If you can go home and explain this to like your friends correctly, like do you know calculus? Like, just get an A, right? Like, most people can't, right? I mean, because why? Because I mean, you have to homework and stuff to do, right? And like, you have to focus on that because that's your grade. This is not your grade, right? It's just, you know, but yeah, it's, yeah, it's fun, but it's interesting. This is really calculus. So this is, this is called differential calculus. So calculus back in the day used to be two parts. It used to be differential calculus and integral calculus. So this is the beginning of what's called differential calculus. Like the old school books, like differential calculus volume one, like these really old school books that are like really hard to read and they smell good. And the second one <laughs> is integral calculus. Integration is the opposite of differentiation. So finding the derivative is called differentiation. Unfinding it is called integration. So, but that's 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 basically the main idea of most of the course, right? What what Austin said, what he re Josh Josh said. That's awesome. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> that the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. Let me show you um, how to get the answers to some of the homework. Let me show you that next. So I'm just going to pull this down, and then I'll show you. I'll probably delete this, but I'll let it record just in case, because who knows. 